Secrets of the Pressure Gradient Force. Let's talk about wind. Now, during meteorology class, we learned that wind results from a pressure gradient force. At least, that's what we remember during those periods when we actually remained awake long enough to hear this vital bit of knowledge. So, what does a pressure gradient force actually mean? Well, let's find out. Here's a slice of the atmosphere showing two columns of air having equal surface pressure at sea level, or 30 inches of mercury, in column A and column B. In other words, if each of these columns were resting on a scale, they would weigh the same. Now, we know that atmospheric pressure decreases approximately one inch of mercury for every thousand feet of altitude change. Therefore, at 5,000 feet in both columns of air, the pressure at positions one and two is 25 inches of mercury. Now, let's heat up the air in column A. Heated air expands, so the air in column A expands vertically by some small amount. As it does, watch what happens to the level where the air's pressure is 25 inches of mercury in that column. Yes, position one moves up slightly. The 25 inch pressure level in column A now rests a little above the same pressure level, position two, of the unheated air in column B. We can now say that uneven heating of air caused all the pressure levels in the vicinity of 25 inches of mercury to slope downward to the left slightly. As we know, if we move closer to sea level, the pressure increases. If we move upward away from sea level, the pressure decreases. So, ask yourself, what is the pressure here at position X to the right of position 1? I want you to say it. Say it. Good. The pressure at this point is 26 inches of mercury because it's beneath the 25 inch of mercury pressure level, which is closer to sea level where the pressure is higher. Now, ask yourself what the pressure is here at position Y to the left of position 1. I want you to say it out loud. Yes, go ahead, say it. Yes, it's 24 inches of mercury. Why? Because it's above the 25 inch of mercury pressure level where the pressure is lower. Go above any sloping level of pressure and the pressure level is going to be lower. Go below any sloping level of pressure and the pressure value is going to be greater. And here is where the magic begins. We know that air moves from high pressure to low pressure, correct? Correct. So a tiny parcel of air at position X, which is at 26 inches of mercury, will move to the area of lower pressure located at position Y. Do you see why? Excellent, and that's because the air at position Y rests along the 24 inch of mercury pressure level. And 24 inches of mercury is certainly less pressure than 26 inches of mercury. And the fact is that when pressure levels are tilted, even slightly, they generate a pressure differential in the horizontal direction, also known as a pressure gradient force. And this is what generates movement of the atmosphere, also known as wind. For example, we see how air moves horizontally at several thousand feet above sea level when we heat the air in column A. So let's say the air in column A is inland, where the land heats up during the day while the air in column B rests over a cooler ocean. At sea level, under column B, the cooler air produces a pressure of 31 inches of mercury. This difference in temperature produces slightly closer or compressed pressure levels at position 3 and expanded pressure levels at position 4. Looking closely at position 3, would a parcel of air at this position move right or left? Well, clearly it would move to the right toward position 4, which is at a lower pressure. And this sets up the traditional closed cell circulation known as a sea breeze that typically occurs during daylight hours. Of course, at night, the land cools quickly while the ocean retains much of the heat it absorbed during the day. Therefore, air and land switch temperature profiles with the land being cooler than the ocean and the circulation reverses, becoming a land breeze instead. Well, congratulations. 
You now know the basics of how wind is generated by tilting pressure levels. In other words, when pressure levels expand or compress in the vertical direction as a result of the heating or cooling of large masses of air. Believe it or not, if you can understand this basic principle of the pressure gradient force, you can easily understand how the low altitude and high altitude jet streams form, to name a few. So onward and upward, and as they say south of the border, hasta la bye bye. Greetings folks, Rod Machado here. If you would like to learn more about meteorology and understanding weather as it applies to flying an airplane, then please consider purchasing my five and a half hour course on understanding weather for pilots. You'll find this course to be very helpful in understanding some of the very complex phenomena that occur in meteorology. This course can be found at my website at rodmachado.com.